Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be going over how to use the Open Scoreboard Editor. We're just going to go one by one uh, over the different components and everything that we have. So, um, this editor is built off of Grapes.js. It is an open source project and it allows us to customize uh, pretty much any component. And then uh, what we do is we add uh, a quick overlay of the editor uh, in the top right hand corner, we have body right here. And this is gonna be the whole kind of body. As we drag items onto the body, there's it's going to form like a tree sort of thing. So you're gonna have these branches for, uh, you know, nested components that are inside of each other. And then that's, uh, that's pretty important. And we'll be using that a lot uh, one, whenever we start to create our scoreboards, um, cause it'll show us kind of what, uh, what child components are, uh, what's the parent component of that. Um, but in this video, we're just going to be going over, uh, the different items that we can drag and drop onto our scoreboard at the initial release of open scoreboard. So, uh, on the left-hand side, there's all of our components and, and their different categories. Uh, we have undo, redo, save, export, import. Um, those are all pretty ex self-explanatory. Um, you do need a password for exporting it. So you'll, you'll export it, you'll give it a password. And then uh, when you import it, you'll need to type in that password to, to decode it. So it does give you an encrypted uh, live, or I guess uh, open scoreboard uh, file format. Um, on the right hand side, we have our styling. So we'll go through that. Um, these ones, you'll select a certain component that you're working on and then you can do some customizations um, on what color, how they react and, and everything like that. So uh, let's start with containers. So containers is gonna be uh, the most important thing. It's the most simplistic thing as in it doesn't react to anything in our match scores or anything like that. So it doesn't react to anything, but it does play a very important role in how our scoreboards are formed. So we have two of them here. We have row and container. And so these are the only components that you can actually drag and drop around kind of anywhere you want. Everything else kind of fits into its own little spot. So just to see how these react, um, if I take, I guess we'll, we'll introduce our, our basic ones here. So we have text and image. Um, these are our two basic uh, component types. Uh, these are, if you want to hard code uh, a tournament name or something like that into your scoreboard, you can use these. And same with images. So back to raw or to, back to row and column containers. If I drag this text in here, this is what's going to happen in a row. It it will act as if this entire box is one single row. Whereas with columns, it's going to do kind of the opposite where it's going to go vertically. So that's the main difference. Um, and you can use a combination of these to you know, create your scoreboards because there's normally always some sort of structure to a scoreboard. So uh, those are your containers. Those are important and we'll be using those a lot. Uh, basic, like I said earlier, you have text. If you just wanna hard code uh, your text into there, it will never change. Same thing with your image. You put your image in. Let's go ahead and go over to service icons. Let me go ahead and zoom in here. All right, so. With service icons, uh, these ones, uh, it does not actually give you the icon itself, but it does give you a um, kind of like a box that will disappear or reappear depending on, you know, whatever the status of the game is. So uh, because we support table tennis and pickleball, in pickleball, they have a second server, uh, whereas in table tennis, they just have one. And so... Uh, you'll see here custom service icon, custom service icon. These are actually just, um, you know, kind of fields, but they will disappear. So like this text, I just put it inside of our custom service icon A. So when A is serving, insert your text here will will be showing. And same thing with B. And 
uh, for second servers, uh, you'll you'll also have like an additional icon. Um, so in pickleball, it would say it would have these two things um, showing if the second server was was uh, serving at that moment. So these are more so um, they don't provide any icons or anything, but they do allow you to insert your own custom icon or text or whatever you want to show that second server and first server are actually serving. So let's go over to game and match point graphic. Um, this is a similar thing um, when it is game point, which normally means uh, on the very next point for a certain person or a team, uh, that team or person will win the match, or, or I guess win the game. And then uh, the match one is, you know, if you're best three out of five and you have two games under your belt and you're just about to win your third, it's going to be showing match point. Um, otherwise, it would show game point if you're about to win a game. And this is the same sort of thing. It gives you a basically a box that you can insert your own uh, you know, text that says game point, uh, insert your own image that says game point, you get to pick and choose. Um, but it will disappear and reappear if it is game or match point. Penalty flags. Um, these are set um, in the scorekeeping app and they will also appear or disappear um, by default. They do not show because normally you don't start off a game with a, a yellow or a red card. Um, so these ones, um, yeah, they just appear or don't. Uh, and you can also put whatever color you want. If you want to put a, a yellow box in there, you can put one for yellow card. Um, it's totally up to you. For timeouts, the exact same thing. If it is a timeout uh, or if the team or person player is currently taking a timeout and, you know, normally timeouts last no more than like a minute or so. So if they are actively taking their timeout, this will show. It does not show if they have already taken their timeout. Um, so that could be something that's added in the future for, for timeouts. But right now it'll only show if that player or person team is actively in their timeout. And that is controlled by the scorekeeping app as well. All right, so we got court side. So these are, um, right now these are pretty limited, uh, but this is essentially designed so that you can get the, you can get the player's names. So we have A serving, B serving, and that's going to be basically our service icons. Um, I guess I don't have a second server at the moment, but for A serving, B serving, it will show whether or not that person's serving or not. And the main, and, and these are all pretty much similar. They're similar um, components, but the main difference with these is that if you had this right next to your court, and let's say that player A is on this side, player B is on that side. Typically, um, or in, in some sports, most sports, after that game, they will switch sides. And so if this court side scoreboard is on the court and you still have, you know, A is over here, B is over here, but the scoreboard doesn't change, then that's going to throw some spectators off. So these this court side category is specifically for components that need to switch so you'll have your game score your match score the player's name and whether or not they're serving um, those are the only components that you can place on a scoreboard and will switch as the um, match continues and there is a setting uh, in the scorekeeping app that will allow you to kind of switch depending on uh, you know, if the player's on the right side or not. Because um, ideally from the scorekeeping app, if the player's on your left, it, you should just tap on your left-hand side if that person scored a point or not. And 
So that, that would be for courtside. That's only if you're doing a courtside scoreboard, though. Uh, show game score containers. So um, this is a kind of container. So we have games one through nine that are supported in open scoreboard. And this is basically more so table tennis doesn't do this that often, but pickleball does. Pickleball essentially has um, kind of like a tennis like scoreboard feature where in game one, it shows you game one. Once you get to game two, it'll show you game one and two. Once you get to game three, it'll show you game one, two, and three. And so basically this is a um, this is a component that will show or not show that specific game scores. Um, you know, so when they start game two, game two will appear. If game two hasn't started yet, then it will be hidden from the player's view. Or sorry, not from the player's view, but the, the score keep. It, it'll be clear. It will not show on the scoreboard. Current game. Uh, so this is for, uh, you know, the, the current game. Uh, so you can show game by game results. Um, but this one, basically, whatever the current game is, A game score and B game score is going to show. Um, so it could be match one, it could be match two. Um, like in table tennis, they don't have the scores expand as you go. So, um, you know, having the current game score is normally what is what is standard. And then uh, you'll just have the match score as you go on as well. So those will either show a zero or whatever the game score is um, for the current game. And then player names, um, you have the combined A name, and this would be, you know, first name, last name. It would also take care of doubles. Um, player A, player B, um, this one is just going to do those specific players. So if you, if you want a combined doubles game, uh, then I would suggest using combined A and B. Uh, if you want the full names of the players that are there, I would say do player A, player B. So that is it for player names. Uh, for game scores, uh, so this is what would be used inside of the show game score containers. And so um, essentially what you would be doing for game, for game number one, you would be going to game one and inserting both of those scores so that you would have both of those available. Um, and then if games one hasn't started, which normally it does, then, um, you know, these, these would not be showing, but then they, they would later on. And so you have the game scores for A and B going all the way up to nine. And for baseball, you know, normally you play nine innings. Um, so we could, ex uh, we could be expanding this to something more, um, if, if we ever end up adding baseball to this, because uh, you can go over nine innings, but also you can go as many innings as possible until someone wins. So um, I don't know if we would be adding a game every single time for that. Uh, so under match, um, we basically just have the round. So inside of the scorekeeping app, there's a round that will show this is normally, um, you know, round of 16, quarterfinals, semifinals, uh, and, and such like that. Um, that's, that's typically all this will show. It's just that the text of whatever or that, that round is. It. Uh, so we have teams, uh, team A name, team B name, team A score, team B score, and then we have uh, logos for those teams. Um, so these will be uh, photos. And the URLs will be added in the uh, scorekeeping app. And then uh, the team scores are incremented. This has, th these fields will only show if this is a team match. If it's just, a no if you create a table or a court, um, one of those playing areas, uh, and it's not within a team match, then these items won't even show. So when you're designing your scoreboard, you can actually still add these team values 
um, because they won't show during um, you know normal matches. So you can have a team scoreboard included, but it'll just disappear. Um, so you won't have to go back and redesign the scoreboard later if um, you, you want to add teams. Uh, jersey colors, um, these are basically just uh, colored boxes. Um, in the scorekeeping app, you will select what jersey color the player has, and it will show, uh, it will then change the background in the scorekeeping app to that side so you can more easily uh, identify the scoring uh, for whoever's keeping score. Um, but these essentially are just... Uh, colored boxes um, that you can use to display uh, the jersey color of whoever's playing. Flags, uh, so these are country flags. Um, this is not available in team matches, but it is available for players that have been added to a player list. Um, so you can't add a player if you're manually entering, a, you can't add a flag if you're manually entering a player name. But what you do for this one is uh, you would add a player to a player list and then you would assign their country there. And then um, whatever country you, or whatever country that player's from, you know, uh, you just select their country and then their appropriate flag will show. So you, know, you, can, you can drag this onto your scoreboard and configure the size and everything that you want um, for the flag. And then um, you know, it, once it comes to the player's flag, uh, it'll show the appropriate flag. The American flag is just a, a placeholder. But it will dynamically update uh, in the actual scoreboard. Player images, uh, so player images, um, there is an image URL that you can add to a player's. Uh, same, same thing with their, with their flags in the same area, with that player's country. Um, you can also add a player uh, image URL um, and, and that will play, or that'll, uh, you know, show right here so you can drag this on and then if the if both players have a image it will it will show the image um, of those players on the scoreboard so um, that is it for all the components that are available right now um, let's go over to uh, borders on the right hand side here um, so borders um, this is simply a border. You get to choose the, the, the top, bottom, left, or right. Um, sometimes you want to, you know, you can, if you click on this border and you say, I want to have a, a border that is nine pixels and solid and it's going to be black, it's going to show up there. And then you can do those borders however you want. You do need to have a width of at least one style needs to be chosen um, for it to actually show. And then it's just kind of assumed to be black right here. So those are the borders. Inside of general, we have things that are like displays. Uh, so display, mostly everything is flex. Um, if you're familiar with CSS and you're like a web developer, you know, a lot of this stuff is directly translated to CSS. Um, we just have an interface here. So uh, floating, uh, we don't really need to worry about. Um, I think the only thing we really need to worry about here, um, most, most items here are in a static position. Um, there are some CSS tricks where you would need to hit relative um the containers like the top row containers they're going to be absolute 
Um, so that means they can be anywhere on the screen. Um, but this is most, mostly you would only be doing this for, for row containers where you would want to drag it wherever you want. Um, for the most part, you want new things. Like if you're going to add something, you want this green line or green bar to show so that you know it's going to snap into a certain position and and it will be in a static position. Um, where with absolute, if I were to change this to absolute, it'll just be right on top of everything. It doesn't care about any other sort of, uh, I guess, uh, components that we have inside of this uh, row container. And then uh, top, top, bottom, um, that'll determine how far it is from, you know, so it'll be 10 pixels down from the top, 10 pixels up from the bottom. You can play around with these to, to get it where you want. If you're, if you are going to use absolute, if you're not, then you can just stick to uh, static or relative. And then next category is flex. Um, so these are because we have our display. Well, I guess our display is flex there. So but because we have our flex display here, these settings uh, do mean something. So flex direction is row, and that's why it goes in the direction of a row. Uh, the no wrap, this one is just so that if your component runs out of room, it won't wrap down to the next line. Um, justify content. We'll use this sometimes, um, but mo it's mostly just for spacing. Uh, but essentially, this this will um, you know either center or you can put space between. Uh, there's a number of different things you can do with here. Um, align content, align items, mostly just centered. Just stuff to play around with where things are are being put. Dimension, dimension is one that we will use a decent amount. Um, so like for example, our column container that we selected, you know, it has a width of this. If we remove these, um, now it is just whatever fills the box. Like it, it, this text is basically uh, telling the parent column container how high or how wide it can be because we removed that. Um, margin, margin, we probably won't use that much because it, it, it adds some buffer on the, on the outside of the column container. Um, but sometimes it can mess things up a little bit. So for the most part, we would want to add padding. Um, so padding would be on the inside. So as I'm adding padding to our column container, you can kind of see some some padding being there, so there's some white space in there. And then typography. Uh, we're mostly going to use this just for text. Um, we can technically assign it to almost any component here, but it's, it's mostly going to affect our text. So uh, like I have insert new text here, we're gonna change the font, you know, make it, make it 50 pixels, so it'll change you know, this is mostly our font stuff and you know, make it bold and everything like that. So we can change that however we want. Uh, text align, line height, you can you can add, you can play with letter spacing as well. Uh, just play around with those if you if you want to change the, the look of your uh, text. Text shadow you can add as well. You know, it's just something you can play with. Get your own unique look. Decorations. Uh, so we do have background color. We can we can use this. Um, ideally, there's background down here that is is more common, um, but it also gives you some more options as well. So uh, border radius is you know that's how how thick your or how curvy you want your corners. So um, I guess a good example would be with our flag right here. 
if I want to add a border radius, we're going to see that it's actually curving the flags and uh, pointed tips, I guess, you know, so it's not a perfect square anymore. It's a rounded square. That's essentially what border radius does. And you can choose left, right, like top, left, right, bottom, left, right. Uh, border, um, this is just an all around border. If you use this, it's gonna do uh, top, bottom, left and right, um, where borders at the top, you get to choose specifically if you want top or bottom, left, right. You get to do those individually. Uh, box shadow, it'll add a, a shadow, um, kind of like what we did with our text here. Uh, but background is an important one here. Um, because it allows us to do an, a background image, a background color, or a background gradient. And those can look really nice when you get uh, just any color combination, really. Um, especially for, for things nowadays, we can, you know, we can add whatever kind of uh, color combination we want. And we can change the, the type of it, radial or bottom, left, right. You know, there's all sorts of things we can do with the background. So that's going to be a, a more common choice. And then under extra um, opacity, if you want it to be partially see-through, um, you can make it whatever value you want in between zero and one. Zero meaning it just completely disappears. Um, and then it, it gets i guess denser at, as you get closer to one and you cannot it's not transparent at all once it's at one um, transition um we don't really need to use the transitions we do use transforms sometimes um if you want to i guess really if you want to um rotate or if you want to move something where you can't quite get it there, um, you can you can play with those values in order to get where. Uh, and, and I guess mostly it's for um, things that are not part of your normal uh, scoreboard. You know, maybe you'll have um, like your your game match uh, or your your match point message might show outside of your normal scoring area, um, but you still want it to be lined up with a component in your scoring area, um, that's when you would use transform and translate Y um, and stuff like that. But um, we, we don't use that too much. That's only for certain cases. Um, okay, and that is it. Hopefully this was uh, educational for you. And um, if you have any questions, uh, please put them in the comments below. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.